Hey everybody, this is Way to Fail, and we are back with more scrolls. I'm going to start this time with going to the store because I've gotten a little bit of gold. I've played just a tiny bit, and I just want to go and buy some individual cards. You can see that I did end up buying a Gravehawk just because I may want to do an energy order deck later. But for now, we're just going to buy some individual growth cards and see what we can grab. So let's start Great Wolf. That will be an immediate addition to the deck because that gives me three now, I believe. Rumble. Opponent's unit moves one step and units all move one step to random adjacent enemy tile. That looks like a fun card. <sighs> looks like it actually has a lot of uses, especially if I want to break into certain areas. I'll have to, I'll have to try sort of incorporating that. I'm not sure if it really fits in the tile when I'm doing another Kenfolk Brave. I actually have more than I can use, so that's a really good card, but trade bait. Stone Pack Memorial, I have plenty of those, maybe too many, and that's it. Oh, that's all I can buy. But notice here, I bought individual cards and I get a rare. You can tell by the perforated edges. An uncommon, a rare, and a common card. So two rares, one uncommon, one common. Maybe RNG's RNG, but you know what? I will take it. So let's go ahead and load up our deck. I, I would like the last deck used to be auto-loaded out here, but it's not a big deal. So we're definitely going to put... So let's go ahead and filter out these other two things. Uh, let's see. One thing we definitely want is to have our third Great Wolf in there. And I have too many Kimfolk Braves. Let's see... I try and keep my decks down to 50. I do wonder if maybe maybe putting in a few more cards could be worthwhile, but I really want to stick to 50 if I can. So I have two rumbles. Move your opponent's units around. That's a pretty good control card, but it feels a little situational. So I'm not sure. Maybe I will get rid of something like Essence Feast because that's equally situational. But let's see all the spells that I have. You notice if you look down here that I have still some structures. You do want to have some walls. I found there are some games where I just need them, although otherwise I try and keep with having people actually coming in and blocking for me. Championship Ring's pretty good, but I'd probably replace it with Crimson Bull if I could manage to get more. It's still one of the cards I want. Entangling Root, I've been using that less and less. But I think for now I'm going to get rid of the Vitral Aura because I've found that I've not been using that at all. So there we go, back to 50 cards. Still have a decent deck. Some cards that could get the axe soon include, like I said, Essence Feast. Leeching Ring. Leeching Ring's done a lot of good for me. Bear Paw has been pretty good, but it's probably the Entangling Roots. Maybe Championship Ring. Ellen Vital has been really good, especially when I face growth decks and they try and poison me. So let's just save our mono growth deck. And we're going to do another ranked match deck because I've had some good ones recently. I've gotten this crap smacked out of me and vice versa. So let's hope that we get a good match here. Just going to wait for the opponent to show up and here we go. GLHF. Now that my rating's going up a little bit, I'm facing some more quality opponents. So it's my turn first. Not going to be using Quake anytime soon. So there goes my card to clear the board if needed. So this is another energy deck. So this could play well into my hands or not. And let's see our Grave Gravelock Raider. He's relentless. He knows what's up, I guess. Let's see here. Leeching Ring's good, but let's see. I kind of want to save this Bane. I could actually use it on him. Um, the veteran's gonna be really good to have kind of in my pocket later So I'm gonna go ahead and See it's just that it's hard to justify holding on to these expensive cards early I have a lot of creatures so I can afford to dump one or two early I may save the Bane for this I want to see if he puts out some other cards because that's kind of a low priority target I can take it out With a few cards I can put out pretty well And energy are not the best at buffing in the world. So let's see your useless contraption. Maybe he's setting up for some other kind of play. Illthorn Wall. 
doesn't do me a ton of good. But I guess I could go ahead and put it up. I go ahead and sack the leeching ring. And let's see here. I'll just cast this here. Try and get some map control early. Because so I do want to save the, both of those if I can. And if he moves this guy up here, which he is, I'm going to kill this guy next turn with my fancy little dude here. I know it's using a Crimson Bull early, but better to use your cards that you have than not. So is he going to buff that guy is the question. No, he's not. He's just going to sit on three energy. I do. I can get a Wolf Brother out now, which actually may be a better use. So let's see here. Actually, yeah, I'm going to get out the Wolf Brother now, try and get that out early. And I'm just going to sack the Crimson Bull. It's two cards I really like getting rid of early. Um, healed one each turn. These are both viable ones for getting rid of. Because I just want to get creatures out early. At least do one damage to that guy. He's relentless, but he's relentless for one damage. So I just have to hope he doesn't buff him. But he's probably going to direct damage my uh, growth energy producer. Or he's going to put out an ether pump. That is something I'm going to have to deal with. But probably not that way. Oh my god, rallying and fertile soil. So... Well, this is awkward. Let's go ahead and put you all down here. Because that ether pump is going to do some work. So this deck's supposed to look like a weenie deck at first. I don't want to turn it into an actual weenie deck. Uh, yeah. I guess I could go ahead and cast this on my wolf brother. Probably should have kept him there just to block. That's my mistake. Oh well. I'll take him out next turn. And if he moves him up there, he can actually help him survive, but... Yeah, Aether Pump. It's a good constant damage pressure, and he gets a Gravelock Elder out as well. I've not seen this card before. Other creatures you get get one health and one something else. And now I can put out a Great Wolf. I need to keep in mind that I can use Fertile Soil on this guy pretty soon. It's kind of funny to sack a rallying, but that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm this is actually maybe a Gravelock deck, which I have not seen before. So this is all new to me. Just go ahead and summon a wolf. Try and keep these a little bit spread out so at least that first guy will die. Because I do not want these guys ramping up. And I apologize if I sneeze here. I am so sorry. See how my new microphone picks that up. So round six so far, that ether pump is going to be a problem. And he has a cannon automaton as well, so this is a creature-based energy deck, which I am not used to seeing. But this is actually a pretty formidable opponent. And there's Binding Root. Which can do some good things for me. That ether pump's gonna kill this guy, so I could try and rally and kill everything, but it's probably in my best interest just to do this. Get more cards, there we go. Save this guy for later. So here I have one energy left. He's probably not gonna move that guy this next turn if he summon him down there. So let's go ahead and eagle eye. Or, yeah, Eagle Eye, I guess you call it that. What do we got? Okay, so we can get a few more of these guys out. Probably don't need that many. Okay, so... Gravelocks literally look up to the, their elders. Yes, they do. And whir, whir, poo, boom, whir. Cannon Automatons, I really like that card. It's just such a strong, it's fast, it's heavy. And obviously there's a reason it costs six energy, but there we go. It looks like he's going to go for my wolf brother. So this guy's going to die between this damage and this damage. If only the Aether Pump actually... Oh, no, he didn't kill him. That's odd. I would have I would have done that. Alright, so 
how are we going to do this? I could throw one damage on the cannon automaton. I can actually kill that guy now without summoning a wolf, which is probably the better play. And I really should get some mana out because I have plenty of cards in my hand. These guys are going to die in one turn until I get a cannon out. So as odd as it sounds, I'm actually going to sack one of the vetters. I normally don't do that at all. And let's see. Hmm. I could do multiple rallies and try and get after the ether pump. We'll see how that works. I think for now my bigger deal is probably just to bind. Well, let's go ahead and drop this guy here. I don't want to drop him down one extra because he could actually kill me. So grave lock down. My goal once again with this is just to always clear the board, and that ether pump is something I'm gonna have to fight. Just gonna have to. No two ways about it. But if I get the right card, I might be able to rally next turn and drop one of these guys. And see, that's why I wanted to save the uh, Bane for this guy, because both of these guys are kind of terrifying. This one's a little worse. In fact, I may just root this guy here. Because if he's stuck at the bottom of the board, he's not going to do a lot of damage. I can just concede that part. Gravelock Outcast, pay on growth to heal Gravelock, one full health, but he doesn't have that. Kimfolk Brave, so we're starting to get in business here. Okay, so I'd rather have the stuff that's permanent. Let me see here. How do I want to do this? If I bane this guy, if I rally this guy, he'll die eventually. But I gotta be careful. So, I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to think in my mind here what I wanna do. Because that's two damage, I'm gonna have to do at least some damage here. That guy can probably let live for a little while. So it's here, 39 seconds. Not a ton of time. Let's see if we can make this happen. If I can get six damage on that next turn, that'd be good. Feels like a little bit of a waste. I'm gonna keep that guy down and just concede that idle. And we'll put something up here, see if we can draw him into the feint. Because I got two rallyings. See if we can make this happen next turn. Because I just want to get to that ether pump. And I don't think he has any cards that can move this creature around to any tile he wants to. So as far as I know, that guy's rooted. Oh, well. That sucked. It's a good use of direct damage, though. Because if it's energy, they're, they're going to have direct damage in there. Because I know if it were me, I'd want to kill that guy ASAP. And another gun automaton up here. Looks like he's just going to attack... Sister of the Fox, you're good. Let's see here. Fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Alright. I screwed that one up slightly. Let's see here, because that's going to be four damage. Oh no, I can kill him. Because that guy's hasted. I don't even really need to rally this turn. So let's go ahead and actually try and get a different card here. Ragged Wolf, so I can actually start to do some damage here. Binding Root, Sister of the Wolf. Here we go. This is how we want to play this one. Look at all those cards. Alright. Suddenly there's all kinds of stuff on the board. Get to do all kinds of stuff. I actually get to drop my wolf cooldowns multiple turns by getting a mangy wolf out. So that was a good round, but he probably has something up his sleeve that's going to really make my day here. So that ether pump's going to hit me. It's going to take out the sister, but she did her job. She's pretty much going to turn into a mangy wolf eventually. 
Don't really need the roof. Do you like the gun of Thompson? I said I just gotta clear this board. I said that was a good use of getting rid of Rally. Although that's not my ideal strategy, but when you're playing ranked games like this, you can't always go with what's ideal. Like I don't like keeping ether pumps alive that long. If I can avoid it. Here we go. One damage to everybody. That was actually a really good move. Because that's gonna that means these guys are gonna die. You're gonna be hurting. And oh wow. Yeah, he's going for that wolf. So my hits are not going to be as effective next round. Oh, he's going to take out my wolf bro too. So it's going to tighten very nice. I've noticed people have not been talking as much lately, which is a little disappointing, but all right. So let's see here. We got six man to play with. I need to take that guy out as soon as I can because I don't want him to burn me. So, I could use a rally, but that's going to be a waste. I can actually drop you back, put you here. It'll give me some defense, then I can move up and try and clean this next turn. Alright, so we're going to try and get some more cards. And that's just what we needed. That's actually better than baning that guy. Because now if I can keep him alive next round, he's going to heal every round, or I'm going to force him to do something. So, Ether Pump out. You can probably summon one right away, knowing what's in his deck, or not knowing what's in his deck. More important thing is that the Cannon Tom Tom can't move. So he's gotten one of my idols. But you don't have to, you have to get three idols to win. There we go. I'm, I'm just, I'm a player who likes to compliment good play when I see it, so that's why you get the good job. And he's probably gonna, there we go, he's gonna clear my board. So this is something where I am struggling a little bit. But I'm not gonna give up. No reason to do that. No reason whatsoever, so... Let's see here. Who's more dangerous? These guys are both... They're about... They're roughly the same. So what we're going to do here is... I want to hold on to that rallying, but I want to be able to poison one of these guys and take them out too, but it's not really necessary here. There we go. Kenfolk Veterans kind of more what I need here, more my speed, because I need to do some fast damage to these guys. So let's see here. Let's go ahead and take out this guy since you're a little beefier. And we don't really need the wall yet, even though this is a good energy creature deck. Take him out. Save the rally for a little later. Because I can pocket the eternal statue if needed. I'm a little behind, but I'm not super behind. Here. How many more times am I going to sack a rallying card? I hate to do that. Catapult of Goo, so he's gone for some map control. Not terrible. Leeching Ring. Also a good move. Let's see how we can do this. Uh... I don't really have a lot of things that need to leech right now. It will be useful later when he inevitably starts to try and attack me. This is probably going to kick me in the ass, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, sack this wall. I hate doing it, but if I set this wolf down here, he cannot move that guy this turn. Alright, kept my rallying. Let's see if it bites me in the ass. 
it's very possible it will. I do have my magic 7 growth energy, so that's all I'm really going to need for this game. He's probably happy at 6. Looks like he doesn't have any iron ogres, which is probably famous last words for saying, oh, he has iron ogres, which I've heard a few people complain that iron ogres aren't really game winners in of themselves. There we go. Another cannon automaton up there. That one I should be able to deal with. So we're going to have some tricky McTrickerson going on up here. So two damage. There we go. I don't, I don't need these walls right now. Just don't need them. There we go. Championship ring. Good stuff. Alright, so I don't want to particularly take anything from that. We are going to go ahead and... Because I have to move this guy out of the way or he's going to take some damage. To move this guy up here, he's going to take some damage. And I can move this mangy wolf in. And go ahead and get a free attack. Let's see here, I can get a sister of the fox out. Probably want to do that now and save the championship ring for next turn. Reason being is that I don't want him to direct damage spam this guy any more than he already is. Plus, I could get a one growth wolf card. I don't. Kinfolk Braves, even better. Because I can actually cast that and rally it at the same turn. Okay, so if I can just survive this round, I can clear his board of anything that can do damage to me. And I do want to get some map control back. Of course, the key point is actually surviving this round. Good, it looks like he's going for my feint here. Because he thinks I'm going to be attacking that. That's not true. <sighs> Though I guess now I am. So I really don't want that guy fucking up with me. And let's see here, some spark damage. So like I said, i got to worry for the direct damage. Right there, okay. Another great wolf, that's what we want to see. So let me go ahead and... I'm going to go ahead and do this right. That gunner is not going to make me happy. If I have to sack a Kenfolk Brave just to stop him, I'll do it. So let me just go ahead and let's see here. That's gonna be that's gonna be enough damage to take that out. That's gonna be enough damage to take that out. Kim Folk right here. Rallying. Let's cast it. Championship ring is good, but I think I have enough creatures on the board to where I don't really need it, although I could turn my one great wolf into a super unit. So what else do we get? Bear paw. Bear paw is gonna be very useful for keeping this guy alive. So kill it, kill it, so there we go. Someone's probably like, ah, growth is crap, rallying is OP. That's just the nature of the deck. You gotta get to this point and survive the punches. You can see how much damage he's done to me so far, but if I can just get more creatures out. But of course he has cards too. He has a pretty good hand. He has five scrolls. There's a lot he can do. So he's putting up a useless contraption there now. He's probably going to tuck somebody behind there too, which is fine, I guess. Oh, Hellspitter Mortar. That is like the RNG fuckfest of 2013. Oh, Ancestral Totem. Kind of just what I need right now. Unfortunately, this guy could really fuck me up. And there's not a ton I can do about it. Yeah, um, let's see here. So he has five health. He could hit me for four and then spark me. That's a little bit of my worry. So if I do, I want to put that totem out before the big attack. So Ragged Wolf, you're going to be a meat shield. Let's see here. Do I have enough meat shields here? Maybe I do. 
Yeah, it's gonna be a good sacrificial um, guy right there. Because I do want to protect my wolf as best I can. And that means I am actually gonna get rid of Bear Paw, which is okay, because I get another Kenfold Brave, which is pretty sweet. And a Brother of the Wolf, which I actually put both of these guys out. Amazing. So let's see here. We want to put the wolf bro where he can actually do some damage. These guys are all going to activate next turn. So let's go ahead and get you out. Go ahead and get you out. End turn. So now the question is, who does he want to attack? He probably wants to attack the wolf brother that I probably shouldn't have placed right there, but the chemfolk brave, if he doesn't take care of that immediately, it's all going to be a problem for him. And he doesn't know I have another great wolf. He doesn't know that I have an ancestral totem that I can drop next turn. So whatever he clears is going to help me out. It's just kind of the, it starts as a weenie deck and then it coalesces into something far greater. So this has been a good match. I don't mind losing this. There we go, Concentrate Fire. Nice play. That is a great card for this situation. He's throwing a cannon automaton up there. Concentrate Fire, for those of you who don't know, is gets to make an extra attack. So that's some good stuff. So let's see here, five, I'm not going to be able to do enough damage to stop that from lobbing once, unless I put the champ, champ ring on this guy, which I think I'm going to do. So we'll go ahead and drop you here, we'll go ahead and drop you here, and we'll drop you down here, championship ring you because we want to take out that mortar ASAP and we're going to put the uh, totem right here because this guy's pretty tanky so even more damage in fact I can actually move my sister the wolf down here and try to do some damage to this totem just fuck with him a little bit there we go So I've gotten some good creatures. If I can get the Great Wolf out and actually get him in play and doing some damage, that's going to be key. But if I get a rallying or something that'll speed me up, that's going to be way more important. But yeah, 6-4 for 5 and then 2 energy. That's, that's why I like the championship ring. But this deck's supposed to be bursty. Unfortunately, I have, I think, sacrificed 2 rallying cards. There's another gun automaton. Another catapult goo. It's not a terrible placement for that. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so he is all about defending this attack. And that guy's gonna attack no matter what. Can I make this work? I don't think so. So we're just going to sacrifice you, and we're going to go ahead and get you out as soon as possible, because I'm going to see if I can do a play where I can take out all of this here. So this is going to be my meat shield, maybe. Actually, it probably won't be, because that's going to go and do some damage. Let's go ahead and put you down here, and let's go ahead and put you up here. So if I can take out that catapult, that gives me some map control back. I want to keep that great wolf, so... This is the point of the game where you can actually afford to do things, and I totally missed his cooldown came up. I probably should have summoned a wolf, but I didn't. So that probably means this guy's dead, but he's done his job. Because I could have made another meat shield, but I actually did take on one guy, so... Question is, is he going to tunnel here? He should be taking out my buffed guy, who's going to attack next turn. <sighs> no, it doesn't appear to be the case. And he's going to put plating on him, so... Disregards next damage taken, so he is just out to fight me. Essence Feast, F that. 
ancestral totem is where it's at. So he put plating on this guy. All right. So if I attack up here, this guy's actually going to kill this one, so I don't have to worry about that too much. I am going to do kind of a play that's atypical for me. I'm going to go ahead and put out a second totem, because that's even more damage. And do I want to bear paw anything? I probably actually want to bear paw the wolf brother, because I need this attack to go through. Actually, Bear Paul's probably not going to do a ton for me. I do have the energy, though, and I would like to buff something. So let's see here. It's six damage. That's going to actually... I need that guy to kill that totem. I need this guy to do that. So, yeah. We'll go ahead and Bear Paul you. So there we go. One, two... You're dead. Oh, that's right, he had plating. Wow. So, that was me failing that one just a little bit. And unfortunately, this guy isn't talking too much back to me, so... If I had actually attacked with the Sister of the Wolf, though, I could have knocked off the plating. Ugh. That's what I get for not checking once. It's like, oh, surely I'll kill him. Why didn't he move him? So, still, if he takes the bait here... Oh, and now he has an Iron Ogre. And now he's taking out one of my guys. So we just gotta be careful here. Uh, Sister of the Fox, you're just gonna get me two cards anyway. And now what we want to do is just kind of spread the board as much as we can. Get all this stuff up here, all this good stuff. We'll go ahead and drop a Ragged Wolf up here, too. And I will put the Sacrificial Sister in front, even though that guy's relentless and is probably not attacking this turn. Oh, I feel so stupid for not at not doing that other thing before with the Iron Plating. Oh, well. So I actually took out that. So next turn, it could be 16 damage that he has to stop at one place or the other. Or not 16 damage, but 12. And that's what the power of these totems are. I didn't actually really appreciate it at first, but it's because I thought it was if when it comes into play and only then, but no, it's for any creature you have, so. Scatter Gunner. Does he have something that's gonna reduce the wait time as people buy a bunch? Probably not. I hope not. Because I could actually win next turn. He's saving his Iron Golem. That's all he can do at this point, it looks like. So Let's go ahead and just put this up here. Let's not put this out any longer than we have to. Just go ahead and put up the GG. There we go. He can say something just a little bit. And a few up here. A few here. And there we go. That was a fun game. Just trying to get some extra gold, taking out some extra creatures. There we go. That was well played by that guy. I just was able to get enough momentum at the end to save the day. So that's more scrolls. As a bonus kind of end, let's just see. We got a little bit more gold. What other cards can we buy? Let's see here. Just one card. Oh my god, Crimson Bull. Amazing. Definitely need more of those in my deck. And then Gravehawk. So I have two of those now. And then, just so you know, you can actually sell cards as well. I have some commons sitting around. I do have some common orders from before. And some of these are good skill spells. Some of these are not. I do actually have some extras that I can sell here now. So I'm just going to stick with some commons that I can sell, like a Sandpack Memorial. 
So I'm just going to do that for 25 gold. Sorry if you want to trade Sam Pack Memorial. And let's just buy one more scroll, and it is a. Eh, but that's what happens when you buy random cards. So Crimson Bull, definitely adding that to the deck, but this is way to fail. And that is more scrolls. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all next time.